one, amen. We just saying that, right? So let you know we're not a minority. We are the majority. Down here on earth, we might be the minority, but overall, throughout the whole entire universe, we as Christians are the majority. He is because of what I'm going to preach today. Today, we're going to preach on what a Savior, amen? Our Savior is bigger than anything that we can think of. Our Savior can do whatever we need Him to do as long as according to His will. So I want you to know our confidence in Christ has to be greater than it is. I want to encourage your faith to look at how great of a God we have, how great of a Savior we have, and that if God can do great things in our life, He can do great things in other people's lives. Amen? Here in Psalms chapter 18, you're going to hear David here. Now I want to just give you, as a way of introduction, David here, you're talking about a man named David that's speaking here in Psalm 18. You're talking about a man in his life. You look at the life of David, he saw some, some very, very challenges in his life. A lot of adversity, a lot of times of depression, the times of it being attacked, times of being all thinking all alone, times where no one he can no one can understand him and he had to seek after God. This is the young little lad that was insignificant. This is the little lad that was insignificant, not even part of the equation and amongst his peers, even though he did the job that he had to get done. He he took care of the sheep. He, you know, he was a shepherd. He fought off bears and lions. And then, then when it came to fight Goliath, remember, he was, was he, he was overlooked because of his stature and, and, and he wasn't built to fit in the armor and all that kind of stuff, but God still used him. And then at time a little bit further, he, he was a great, submissive, faithful, loyal servant to Saul, right? And then all of a sudden, Saul got a little jealous and envy and all that kind of stuff because people were seeing his heroics and his, and his uh, perseverance and his, and his loyalty to the man and doing all, he built up to be a leader, right in front of Saul, by disobeying and doing what God wanted him to do. And Saul kind of got a little jealous. And Peter said, he suddenly tried to sneak and try to attack him. So he had to go into deep depression. Then when he got in the place of that place where Saul was once, he started feeling the same way that Saul did. Then he had a man killed, Uriah. He committed adultery. He made a mistake. But yet, he's still been labeled in the book, in the Bible, a man after God's own heart. Even though you're sinning and you're trying to get back on track, that's good. But again, that drive and that desire that you have, you still can love God. You can still, but you might not be, there's some things that you're going to deal with that you have to learn how to overcome, and it still might hinder you. I, people make mistakes in the ministry. Don't get me wrong. The problem I have with people is that they sit there and they flaunt them, like it's someone else's fault. But when Peter David here is going to share where his total focus was with going through every adversity in life, something that kept him going forward, and all the different emotional roller coaster parts of his life. At the mountaintop and the valley, challenges and adversities, David still had something constantly going on in his life that I think you and I can get, or you and I can, should be able to understand and grab. Here in Psalm chapter 18, if you could, I want you to look at verse 1, 2, and 3. It says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Verse 3, I will call upon the Lord who is, look at now, worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. His confidence was totally in the Lord. Can I tell you, if I would have learned this back in the day when I was, how can I say, Preacher boy status? Preacher boy status. You know, I, I, I wanted to say a preacher in training, you know what I mean? I got, after a while, like, I want to be no, boy, no one's boy, you know what I mean? <laughs> Can't, I, especially when you're a grown man. You, they sit there and talk, guys that are 36 years old, they're just like, oh, he's a preacher boy. Like, why? He's 36, you know? I can see if you're like a teenager, it's a little different, like 14, 15, 16, but they used to label that thing all, all over the place. But can I tell you this morning, David was fixed. David had something already rooted and something already understood in his life as he walked with the Lord. He knew exactly who to trust, all what Christ could be to him. We're going to take a look at that. He understood how great of a Savior he was. And I believe anything we have to go through in life, we look to the church, the church will fail you. You look to the pastor, the pastor will fail you. You look to your brothers and sisters in the Lord, they're not going to understand exactly what you're going through. They're going to be, hopefully, sympathetic to you and encouraging and try to be there for you. But you know what? Only the Lord knows exactly the deep-rooted chains and, and the darkness. All that. So we need to understand that we need to be like David here this morning. 
I understand what a Savior we have. Once you have that hush of, of the Holy Spirit comforting you and understand exactly who He is in your life, and you might have to go through those challenges, so much greater you'll be, how much stronger your faith will be, and you'll know how great of a Savior we have. Amen? Let's pray. Father, again, thank you so much for this time. Lord, I pray you're blessed now. Psalm chapter 18, David shares some great things in this passage here in the first three verses. Lord, help us, if we could, understand the things that he meant when it came to understanding who you are at any time, any place, anything that's headed our way in this journey in life as we serve you. Lord, help us now. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to understand real quick here, he said, I want you to notice the very first thing I want you, that, that David's desire was for him. Amen? When you're fixed on the Lord and that's all, he, he's your all in all and it's all you want, you're going to see greater and greater things. I hate to say, one of our biggest challenges today in America today is we get distracted with so many worldly things coming our way. And it stirs up our flesh to want to get this and want to do that. And, want to, and our focus comes off the Lord. Our desires change for other things but Him. Now, you're, yes, it's good to desire other stuff because the Lord made it, right? The Lord made it, it's good. We should have desires of other stuff. But here's the thing. He should not be second fiddle. He shouldn't be third fiddle. And I can't believe you said that yesterday. You. So, so here she is. She's up there. Okay, now can the best man say something? And okay, you know, and, and the, the, the main bridesmaid, which is Susan, to her sister goes, she started talking about, oh, I hope you're waiting. But don't forget now, put God first. She said right in front of everybody. And I said, wow. Okay. It's true, right? We put God first, we have no problems. And the thing is that, here is that, can I tell you, whether you do it publicly, which is great, but you need to also do it personally and commit that vow to him when you're on your knees praying, on a daily basis. Every day someone can distract you to truly take away that desire. The Lord, here in verse 1, as you see here in, in chapter 18, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. He goes, I will love thee. I will love thee. Remember a long time ago we did that study on the seven, ch seven church ages? And one of the church says you have left your first love. But before that, the, the church was doing great things. You and I could do great things for the Lord, but if your love is not fixed on him, that means your desire is not fixed on him. We can be doing things out of a religious format, a religious structure. We can look like we're a Christian, but do we feel like a Christian? Your love for God is essential for your desire to move forward. Your love for God is your motivation, your fuel to do great things for God above and beyond that you can ever imagine because of the faith that you would have in him. Your love needs to be dedicated because I will love thee. That's the first thing he said in this chapter. He didn't see anything else, but he said, I will love thee. Ask yourself every morning when you get down on your knees and you pray and you open the bed book, Lord, I love you. Because that's the fuel that's going to motivate you today. That's the thing that's going to put a smile on your face. That's the thing that you're going to see God's blessing that you overlook because you're so busy fixed on the negative and all the problems. And you're going to see how much he truly loves you. I notice when things are calmed down, it's great to count our blessings, amen? And you're going to see how much he... Ask yourself every morning, Lord, I love you. Ask yourself, how much do I love you? Lord, I know you love me a whole lot, but I, listen, David said, I will love thee. He had a commitment. He had a true desire. He understood this. Turn over to uh, Psalms chapter um, 63, if you could. Psalms chapter... Put your, keep your finger at 18 and go over to Psalm chapter 63, if you could. Psalms chapter 63. Boy, we did pretty good on these windows, man. I'm already roasting already over here. Woo! All right. I always say this all the time. If a preacher ain't sweating while he's preaching, then he ain't preaching. <laughs> they hate when I say that because, you know, some of them are so soft and, you know, petite, so. Oh, hi. Okay, here we go. Psalm chapter 63, here, ready? Verse 2 through 8, here we go. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Look at now, verse 6. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Because thou hast been my help. 
Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul, look at now, my soul. What's the next word? Followeth. Follow See that? That's that desire. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. We, we, look at, in life, we, we'll put our energy in a lot of things. We'll put all our energy, all our thought, all our preparation, a lot of things on this life. How much is it in the relationship that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ? David said, I will love thee. So he knew exactly what kind of love he has to have, what kind of love he does have, how much love that he wants to nurture to make greater, how much his desire needs to be going hard after the Lord. How hard are we going after the Lord? How close do you want to be with him? How much do you want to go ahead and just learn how to spend time and meditate with him day and night all about how good he is to show you how much love you truly have for him? Let me tell you now, that's a perfect gauge today in this day and age is the temperature gauge of your love for him and how much you understand how much he loves you. In the end times, you will see you either were going to falter in your relationship or you'll go greater by the desire you have for him because of the love that you have for him. That's your temperature gauge. People don't want to go to church anymore. People don't want to read their Bible anymore because their love is fixed on something else. If you don't believe me, go talk to them. I haven't seen you in a year. What happened to you? Why aren't you in church? Well, you know, this and that. Nah, 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 nah. Well, you'll see them tailgating at a Bills game. You'll see them doing this and that week after week after week after week after week after week. I can see every so often something come up. But you're talking week after week after week after week. No, God's no longer in the equation. Their desire's not there. But here, David said, oh, what a Savior. My desire is for him. In Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22, it says, It is the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Amen? I mean, how many times do we fall short for the Lord? How many, I mean, we fall short all the time. How many, listen, how many times do we fail him? But he doesn't fail us. His compassion is true. That gives me more motivation to want to sit there and just cry and weep and say, Lord, I don't know how you put up with me. <laughs> I say it to my wife sometimes. But, you know, I said, Lord, compassion, he's bestowing compassion on me. And I know that's compassion. Acts chapter 17, verse 28 says this, For in him we live and move and have our being as certain also of our, of our own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Listen, we have some great things. Our, we cannot do anything without God. We can't do, be anything without God. We can't live without God. He's, he's our Savior. What a Savior, Amen. Can I tell you this morning, he needs to be our desire. Number two, the Lord needs to be our defense. I found a long time ago that I have to take a step back. I can't sit there and i got to pick my battles, so to speak. I found a long time ago that I have to back off a little bit, and sometimes i got to give some things to the Lord to figure out, to sort out, to deal with. Because if I get in there, you know what's going to happen? The flesh will take over, and I, my wife will be visiting me, me, me in jail. That's how it is. Yes, I'm a stubborn wop, yes. You. Listen, I wanted to say, I, you didn't hear my comment. She didn't play in the time again, just like you, Rob. You know. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, listen. We understand that anything that goes on, we have a defense. There's certain things we can just step back and let the God, God, deal, God deal with it. I'm just telling you. You better watch how you pick your battles. Pick your battles. It says here in Psalm, you can turn over to Psalm chapter 62 if you want. Psalm chapter 62, turn over there in verse 6. I'll show you a little bit. In Psalm chapter 139, 5, I'll read this to you. Thou hast been set me be, uh, behind me and before and laid thy hand upon me. Listen, Lord has your protection. I'll never forget all my whole life. I should have been in areas of my life. I should have been dead serving the Lord. Should have been dead. I had a privilege of meeting a guy at work. I love this. I love going to work. And I kind of like slide in my, you know, my witnessing a little bit here and there. But I found that there's a Christian man that works. We had a new place employment. He was talking like a Christian. I go, boy, you sound like a Christian. He goes, I am. I'm a born, born again child.